sure sign of something happening in an industry is the sudden proliferation of a lot of new jug. Of late, climate change, urban mining, circular economy, carbon credits, uh, carbon currency, uh, WTE, W2W, 3Rs, and many such jargons are frequently heard, right? I recently added one more to it, Envirotrepreneurship. That's environment-centric entrepreneurship. There is a lot of mystery around this and a huge uh, lot of information, um, often contradictory information available from different sources. And people end up uh, wondering whether there is really any business sense in environmentalship or is it just a passing fashion. Let me assure you, it is serious business. I have been mentoring Envirocleaners for about a decade now and I am quite convinced about it. I will just give you quick glimpses in seven high profit areas in urban mining. But before that, for those who are new to this field, what is urban mining? It simply means recovering natural resources from urban areas. It is not necessarily about metals, but all of us have a very strong uh, mental association between mines and metals. And therefore, urban mining usually refers uh, to mining of metals from urban areas. But there are no mines in urban areas. So what are we talking about? Where is the metal source? It is right in front of you. All those things that are not used anymore and which contain some amount of metals is your source. In other words, waste. I will now introduce you to seven of these resource streams that I like. Disclaimer. The sequence that I shall be using is a very random sequence and has nothing to do with any relative ranking. There are other streams as well, but these seven are the ones that I find most promising and profitable. Another thing, all the numbers that I should be quoting are from reliable sources such as World Bank, uh, UNDP and respectable statistical research companies. So now so we can pass them. Municipal solid waste. As per global average, a person generates about 740 grams of municipal solid waste every day. In India, it could be about half. But with our 1.2 billion population, the total volume becomes approximately 45 lakh tons of municipal solid waste every day. 45 lakhs is 4.5 million. On average, MSW, municipal solid waste, contains about 10% metals by weight. That makes it 450,000 tons of metals trashed every day. Unbelievable. Discount this by any factor that you like. It is still a phenomenal number. Even if we say that only 1% of metal content is recoverable from MSW in India, we are still talking about 4,500 tons daily. Now consider this. You decide to set up a recycling facility for just, say, just one metal, say aluminium. 
and assume you are able to process just about 0.001% 0.001% of MSW. Considering that aluminium content in metal scrap, uh, sorry, aluminium content in metal scrap contained in MSW is 24%. And considering the current market price of recycled aluminium at about 110 rupees per kg. Go do the math. It should come to about 40 crores of annual business. That's 400 million INR. Number two, waste tires. The Metal Recycling Association of India says every year 1.5 million tires are scrapped and only, uh, four, only 450,000 are recycled. See the headroom for growth? Now look at this. Approximate steel content in tires is about 15% by weight. So we are talking about at least 2,250 tons of steel recovery potential every year. And this number will only go up because in India, vehicle sale is increasing. Vehicle usage is increasing due to the rise in per capita income as well as a rapidly widening road network. Add to it some new business models that are coming up in the car market and that will really take this out of proportion. And steel is not the only thing that you get from recycling of tires. Okay? There is about an equal amount of natural rubber that can be recovered Rubber crumbs sell for anywhere between 20 to 50 rupees per kg depending on the quality. You can even think of forward engineering and production of items such as turfs, tiles, etc. At Respose, we have now made the technology part easily available, creating awareness and firing imaginative, imaginative entrepreneurship is what is now needed. Number three, automobile scrap. As I talk right now, automobile scrapping policy is being written. This is one big source of scrap. In the recent government budget, central government budget, a lot what's said about scrapping older vehicles, uh, the announcement should provide a big impetus to this sector. Okay. Um, not enough data is available right now on metal composition, but my best guess uh, is on an average, a four-wheeler passenger vehicle uh, should have about 600 kg of metal on an average. Add to it, Larger vehicles such as buses, trucks, trailers, tractors, earth moving equipment. It's clearly a potential for a few thousand tons of metal every year. As of now, there is no formal infrastructure or rather I would say no formal full-fledged dedicated automobile recycling facility in India. TVS and Mahindra uh, have done some pilot plants, uh, but that's about it. So if you are an ambitious entrepreneur willing to put in the hard work, this is a sector you cannot ignore. Number four, construction and demolition waste. As per the Indian government's center of Center for Science and, and Environment, India recycles just 1% of its CND waste. 
official estimated generation of CND waste in India is about 115 million tons per annum. The unofficial number is at least three times. Some say it is five times. Just think about the potential headroom for growth in this industry. CND has generally uh, steel, aluminium uh, among the major metals. Besides, it has many other components such as bricks, concrete, gypsum, wood, etc. From CND waste, almost 90% is recyclable as per some global studies. Unfortunately, no reliable statistical numbers are available for India. However, based on global studies, we can surely say it is a profitable activity. At the same time, also keep in mind that much of the revenue will also come from tipping fees uh, rather than purely from uh, sale of recovered metal. Of course, you can earn from the uh, recovered material, but it may be a better idea to set it up like a service model. Number five, electronic waste. Electronic waste is generally hyped up by the media by talking about gold and other precious metals in e-waste, but generally, I prefer to consider base metals for business viability. As of 2020, India generated about 2 million tons of e-waste. The unofficial number is around 3.5 million tons. Of this, just about 200,000 tons is actually recycled officially. The rest of the e-waste is either waiting to be recycled or is handled by the informal sector. This makes the electronic e-waste, electronic waste recycling sector very lucrative. There are regulatory compulsions, growing awareness among people and policies of manufacturers. And the country needs at least about two to three thousand more recycling plants. Now look at the profitability. Even if one focuses only on copper, it's a great business. On an average, e-waste contains about 16 to 20% of copper. So 2 million tons of e-waste generation actually means a potential to recover about uh, 320,000 tons of copper at 16%. At the current price of 350 rupees per kg for scrap copper, the value should come around a little more than 10,000 crores INR, which is about uh, 100 billion INR plus every year. Now, apart from copper, e-waste has significant amounts of aluminium and ferrous metals as well. Precious metals such as gold, silver and palladium are also present but are extremely difficult and expensive to recover. A small recycler cannot recover these precious metals efficiently. Okay. Also, everything in e-waste does not contain precious metals. So do not imagine a business model around precious metals unless you are willing to invest at least about 60 to 70 crores in the business. Dig your heels in, wait for two years, and the returns will come. Okay. But on the other hand, if you are focused on copper, you can set up a decently sized facility for as low as two crores or even lower. Number six, batteries. Batteries have been around for quite some time and we have been recycling them for long but most of it, rather all of it as of now, uh, is based on lead-acid batteries. With the proliferation 
of electronic devices lithium ion uh, nickel cadmium uh, nickel magnesium hydroxide and other types of batteries are also becoming a major proportion uh, as per markets and markets the global recycle global battery recycling market is worth about 17 billion usd okay uh, and as per jmk research uh, by 2030 india has the potential of about uh, usd 1 billion uh, in recycling of lithium ion batteries alone only lithium ion batteries okay and lithium ion batteries are currently only about 20% or lesser as compared to lead acid batteries okay by 2030 this proportion will significantly change due to the electric vehicles the rate of growth and the headroom are immense technologies are available it is a matter of somebody getting serious about it Tata Chemicals has a pilot plant uh, and they are planning to scale it to about 500 tons per annum that's what I heard last and that is minuscule compared to the entire demand number seven metal scrap global metal scrap industry is worth USD 500 billion 500 billion US dollars okay. while India hosts about 17 percent of the world population our market share in this scrap metal industry is just about 2 percent the potential to rise as a metal recycling hub of the world is huge considering the labor arbitrage the land availability the ports infrastructure India is one of the best countries to leverage on this opportunity the most popular metals in scrap uh, among scrap imports are aluminum copper and steel now think about this India is world's second largest producer of steel with our entire steel production uh, less than 10% is through uh, scrap steel 90% of our steel production is from ore now consider these facts using scrap steel is at least three times cheaper than using iron ore Two, there is 90 percent headroom for growth and three we are among the largest producers of steel in the world these three points together highlight the potential of the industry like nothing else and we did not even talk about other metals so in a nutshell urban mining is the next big thing for India it has the potential of being bigger than the IT industry the opportunity exists the time is ripe technology exists investors are hungry for new real ventures and success stories are available we have created some as well are you willing to script your own visit us at responseindia.com and contact us if you are serious about this and keep following this channel and my blog on dbprabhu.com for more such insights have a great thinking time Thank you.